everybody. That we are inside the group. Yes, there we are. All right, perfect. We are inside the group. So we'll give people a minute to join. Looks like we've got a couple people watching already. Hi, everyone. So hi, everyone. We're so excited to be here. So Solaire and I were talking, and we were talking for one day <laughs> and decided to do this for like five minutes. Um, she didn't tell me that we were getting really glam, but it's morning, my time, and evening, her time. <laughs> I feel like we're dressed appropriately for the respective times. So there's in an evening gown, and I'm in like a comfortable brunch outfit. Um, <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, so we wanted to do this live. All right. Backtrack to May. So Lara and I met, we connected. She reached out to me and we hopped on like a call and got to know each other. And, and then she did a channeling session for me, which was awesome. And then she would tell me, she'd be like, you know, we got to do like this and that. And, and I was like, this girl's crazy. Like, she's like, we're going to make so much money if we just do this. And I was like, what's the thing that we're going to do? And she would tell me like all these like, hacks. She'd be like, just think about money, like $1 more. And I'm like, no, that's not how we're going to make money. But I followed along with her and it worked <laughs> and it worked. And we um, had so much growth in the last um, couple of months. And it's because mm -hmm. we leaned on each other, you know? I think it's because yeah. we work together uh, so, so much. Yeah, I think it's a lot like um, when you're in school, you know, like you study with someone and you go to a library together and you both are like cramming for the test. And I feel like I would always do like well because I have someone like as an, my accountability, right? Like even at school and yeah. because then I'm like, okay, I'll meet you at the library and let's study together. Yeah. Well, I think today we really want to talk about just this idea that everybody bumps into um, sort of this idea of, you know, like, like a top, right? Like something that you cannot break through. And uh, what is that, that term that Gay Hendrick talks about? Um, the upper limit. Oh, the upper limit. Yeah, it's interesting because you know how the guys really um, say, no, the, the upper limit thing actually doesn't exist. It's just that um, you know, people sort of like now that everybody has like read the book, everybody's talking about upper limit. It's almost like the more you talk about upper limit, the more you experience upper limit, you know, kind of. Yeah, it's and, true. Yeah, and it's almost like you end up believing that you have to have the, the breakdown in order to have the breakthrough. And then you have to reach the upper limit in, in order for you to like keep growing. But that's actually a misbelief on its own. Yeah. 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 And this idea that you hit a certain, you set yourself a goal, right? Like a, a goal that feels like slightly unattainable and then you hit it. And then what happens is that people ricochet back, they burn out, they, you know, end up like their health ends up suffering, right? You start fighting with your spouse, you start, you know, your kids start acting up and then suddenly you're like, well, I can't maintain this. And you just drop back down to what your comfort zone is. So income ceilings, right? There is an energetic reason why you are setting this income ceiling, some emotional attachment that you have to this number, and it could be anything, right? And sometimes we don't know. And what's really interesting is that sometimes after you find it out, it's very obvious, right? Like this subconscious reason why you have this income ceiling. It might be, you know, the your first salary, right? I see that come up a lot, like the, the person's first salary, and they have this idea like, well, this is the most that I'm ever going to make. And they never make more than that. It might be your parents' income, right? Like your parents' salary. It might be for women, a big one that I see is, is your spouse's income. A lot of people will set their, their energetic income ceiling at whatever their partner makes so that they don't out earn their partner. Um, and, and, and sometimes it's, you know, something else right? It might just be a random number, someone that you met that it was like the most that you had ever met somebody that made that, you know? Um, and so you set this subconscious limit on yourself and you never grow past that. So it might be that you know a lot of people that are making 10k a month, right? This is like a very common yeah. income ceiling. <clears throat> and, and people will hit that 10k a month really, really fast. And then there's another side to this too, which is kind of what I was referring to yesterday, which is that people feel like, okay, now I did it. Now I have to perfect it. Okay. And so they tell themselves, well, I hit 10K, but it was a fluke. I had to pay in full. I hit 10K, but you know, I, it was a launch. You know, this is not a sustainable kind of thing. Now what I need to do is hit a perfect 10K. And the truth is that no, when you hit that 10K, now you expand your limit. 
Yes. Because if you're setting it at, at, you know, if you're keeping your income ceiling there and you're saying, well, now it's, it's my income ceiling, but I've got to make it perfect and I've got to make it easier or I've got to, it doesn't happen. And that's how you end up burning out. What happens is that then you bump it up to the next level. You bump up your income ceiling. You expand into that next level. And when you do that, that's when you start hitting 10K consistently and perfectly. But you have to bump up your income ceiling to 20K, 30K, whatever it is, mm. right? Like it's interesting because I, I, I'm honestly like a really terrible goal setter. Like I, I don't really like setting goals for myself because in part, I've always felt intuitively like the goal limits me for some reason. And I rather let the goal just be almost like an open top. You know, I want it to be like an open top. Like I want to be able to hit as much as I can hit personally. So every time like I, I have to like sit down think about a goal I'm like I don't really don't have one I just wanted to be as much I, I possibly can do you know yeah. um but it's just kind of how I operate personally and I but I recognize a lot of people like they, they feel that ceiling just because there's like that emotional like fear that there's like a fear of like what what's going to happen if I go over that and I find that even with my clients who are already very successful there's the underlying belief that, oh, I'm going to have to work so much harder to get to that next level. Yes. Know? That's something that I wanted to touch on because then as I started meeting women, um, so for me, my energetic income ceiling was like 150 a year. Like I, I had, I reached that very quickly. It was like a number that I was like, okay, this is like, it was already my energetic income, right? Like, yeah. Like, like, like lawyer salary. Yeah, exactly, like lawyer salary. And I was like, all right, you know, if I can do this, I can do it. And I had also met someone who had um, a shop, like a handmade shop, and she made $150,000 a year. So there were lots of reasons why I was like attached to that number and I had set it as my, my max. And then what happened is that because I set that at my max, I just did the work to get there, but I didn't build something that was sustainable to take me beyond. And then I was like, oh, everything is going to be so much harder to get past that. Mm. And as I started meeting people that were making multiple six figures, seven figures, their lives were so much easier yeah. and their businesses were so much easier. It wasn't harder at all. It was much, much easier to make a lot more money. Yeah. Um, and people are responding to this. So oh. lots of people, okay, so lots of people commenting on how they are more underdressed than I am. So that makes me feel good. Thank you. Sorry. So Jody's not even wearing earrings, she says. Um, Jenna's <laughs> on her PJs. And yeah, and, and Tessa, you know, I grew up in a small, poor rural community where disposable income didn't exist. This is a huge income ceiling, right? This idea of like just enough, right? What, whatever I need to then have my bank account drop back to zero because that disposable income, it's unfamiliar, right? And, and it, there's a lot of stuff wrapped up in there. And Ayla says, I, I think it's Ayla or maybe Isla, uh, historically I haven't hit goals and I'd like that to no longer be a thing. And a lot of people are talking about that, about how they struggle to meet their goals and then kind of ricochet back, right? Because then you set yourself up for that feeling of like, oh, I didn't do this. How could I possibly do better? Yeah, I think like, that's why the guides had, had mentioned the other day to another client about um, collapsing time, because what happened is when you set a goal, you have so much fear that comes off, that you're actually, you're blocking yourself automatically when you think of like a bigger number, because you're just not used to it. So they they were trying to, like to tell this client, we're going to give you like a side door and through the side door, you're going to get to the goal, which is what you want anyway. But instead of thinking about a bigger number, like 10,000, then just think you shrink the time, like whatever your comfort zone is, you just make it like you do it half the time. Yeah. So you're focusing on the speed instead of trying to like, you know, work on your limiting belief around money because there's just so much pressure around it and it's not necessary, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I think when you're starting out, um, sometimes people will set a goal, like I want a six figure business for the year. And it's much easier to work in terms of months when you're starting out, I think, because you can set a goal for a certain month. And then, and then what happens to people is then they fall into that cycle of thinking about it in terms of a year again, or three, and yeah. they stretch the timeline back out. Um, but the, the truth is that once you hit that timeline, you're right, then you expand energetically by shrinking the time. 
Yeah, and, and, and I actually feel that sometimes, like if you, if you can make, let's say 5,000 in two weeks, then you still have two more weeks left. I mean, what are you gonna do? Just sit there, you know? Like, it's like you have that time. It's like, yeah. okay, you just ramp up your, your activity, activity and marketing. Then it's like, okay, you can hit it again. Yeah. And there's no pressure because like, it's like, oh, just 5,000. Like, I'm comfortable with that. And that's okay because you just, it's like, sometimes people, people say, well, I want to make a million dollars. But that million dollars is attached to that timeline of I have to make that in one year. And that's where all the, you know, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. The, the key really is, is to let go of the how is so much of it, right? And to trust, to set this like big energetic goal and then say, or not goal, right? Whatever word we want to talk about to expand your energetic ceiling and then say, I trust that somehow this is going to get filled up. Yeah. That somehow, right? And so I'm allowing the space for that to happen without attaching to that number or having it mean anything about me. So yeah. like I just changed, we have, I have the, the Bucky B tracker, the income tracker. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so what happened is I had set it at like a certain goal and I kept bumping into that goal and not really meeting it because it was, a, I had set it as a ceiling, mm. you know, there was like no thought about, okay, well, what happens after this, you know? And, and so your brain isn't as motivated. So what I did is that I, I five times, I, I five timed it, you know, yeah. and I set it for, you know, five times what it normally was. And since then I've been making that consistently what was my yeah. goal for? Because now my brain is like, oh, of course we can do this. There's so much space for us to grow. Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually do that too. Like I would put a, an extra zero at the end, <laughs> but I just tell myself there's no pressure. It just, there's going to be an extra zero. Like this is where I'm going. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And then it, it, yeah. Trusting yourself and allowing to receive. Right. Um, and I think that when we detach from that when we can detach from the goal it, it really really helps and sometimes you know talking we're going to go through this and i'm going to work it into our neuro activation so that we can really figure out what our income ceiling is and then expand it um and sometimes it's just a very emotionally charged number yeah like there's it's not related to a goal it's just a certain number that for us is like it's just this number and then in that case Sometimes the thing to do is double it or triple it and just take off the sting of that, of whatever this goal is that you're not reaching, which is counterintuitive. Nobody tells you that. Mm -hmm. They tell you, mm -hmm. keep going until you reach that goal, you know? And, and I say, if you're not reaching that goal, move on to the bigger goal. The bigger goal, yeah. And expand it. Yeah, because I actually find that when you, when you shift it to make the container bigger it's like expanding the box you know to, so you can put more stuff in it um actually it forces you to think about different ways of operating like you simply cannot behave in the same ways because otherwise it's gonna you're gonna have the same results right like you actually have to operate differently to uh, move towards that goal and it's not actually by working harder. I found that my calendar is like, has so much more space now. And it's because I've just set up my work differently. Like I've had people help me, you know, hired people and it just made things a lot easier because I'm not doing it all by myself now, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And Amna says, having a group of people to tell you everything is possible has been a life changer. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Um, and Beth, I will get to the top of that mountain, but if I tell myself I can take as long as it, but if I tell myself I can take as much time as it takes, that also means I can move fast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that there is a sense, um, you know, we think about time so linearly and we tell ourselves, you know, it always drives me crazy when people say, you're not going to meet your goals right away, right? This isn't going to happen overnight. And I understand that they want to make people feel better, right? If they are not meeting their goals right away, because yes, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. But it's such a limiting belief, the idea that things have to take a long time. Yeah. Because they, don't. Is, they can take yeah. as long as you want them to take, you know? Um, oh, it's just that, like, the role models around our lives is always, like, everyone else is struggling, you know? It's like, that's all you see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the key really is to have that awareness, right? That's why the work mm -hmm. that we do, I think, is so important to have something that regulates your nervous system because that fast growth is very triggering. And I see people grow quickly and then spiral completely. 
mm. and like lose their business, totally fall off the wagon, they burn out. Because if you're not doing the inner work along the way, what you're doing is just constantly ricocheting back and forth. You know, you're growing fast and then dropping back down to your comfort zone. Your brain really, really wants you to stay safe. So you have to do the work to train your brain into thinking, all right, this new level is the safe, is safe. It's comfortable. It's fun. I like it, you know? Yeah, I think it's not just money, right? It, it's everything, like even love, relationship. I see that in, in people. It's like you will hit that, like the love ceiling as well. You know, it's like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and yeah, we were talking about that right now in, in Magnetic AF because someone brought it up and I was saying, you know, when things would be good, I would sit around and be like, okay, but let me think of the way that things, the ways that things are not good right? Bad to balance this out and not get scared. And so a lot of it was creating that safety in my system that it was okay for things to all be going well. Mm. You know, that yeah. it was okay for money to be coming in fine yeah. and not going back out, you know, and it was okay for, you know, my kids to be very happy, for my spouse to be happy, creating like a happy environment and also money. Right. Well, it's, I think it's kind of about creating that new normal for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, because when I first started, the guides would actually, they would tell me to go to the mall. They're like, you know, Slayer, when you don't have anything to do, just go to the mall and touch all the expensive stuff. Because they said, you just have to get used to the vibration of a different kind of, um, it's like, it's almost like the physic physicalness of money. And so when you touch it and experience these things, it's like you just get used to the vibration of the object. And it's kind of like the saying, um, you're the average person of your five closest friends or whatever, but physical objects also have vibration. So when you are surrounded by things that are of a, a high vibration, then you just get used to it faster. Yeah. And so I just got used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's even, you know, we could like, this is like, if we're talking about Chanel purses, but yeah. the little stuff, you know, like, I would use Remember, like, my dish sponge until it like disintegrated, right? If people always laugh yeah. that example. Like I was always like, oh, there's like a tiny little piece. I can get a pan in there, you know? And, and it's like, and my husband would always be like, what are you doing? You yeah. like dollars for a pack of six of them. <laughs> can we just switch it out? I was like, what? Well, they're still, you know? And it's like all of those little things when we talk about our senses and stuff, yeah. they wear on you, right? They reinforce that feeling of lack. So it starts with the small things, right? You know, upgrading your toothbrush however often you're supposed to. Upgrading your razor, that to me was a huge one. I remember I posted, you know, and, and I upgraded my razor to like come every month because my husband was like, this is bad. He's like, I've known you for 11 years and this is the worst I've ever seen it, you know? And I was like, it is like all of these little things that we do to tell ourselves to reinforce this idea that we're not worthy of the bigger yeah. thing, you know, and some of these things are, are ex nice and expensive and some of them are $2 things. Yeah. Like I used to get triggered by the $2 tomatoes. I'm like, yeah. that's too expensive. Like if they were $3, it's like, there's no way I would pay for them. You know? Sometimes it's those little things that are the most triggering. It is. It, it really is. Yeah. Uh, Someone says, um, Add the guacamole, yeah. Uh, uh, not using drug drugstore skincare, yeah, that's a big mm -hmm. one too. Um, yeah, upgrading all of those little things. I always tell Emma and Omnex, they have a skincare line. I'm like, you're giving people the biggest gift, right? Like what you put on your skin is like, if you can give them that feeling of luxury in the tiny yeah. little parts of their, you know, of their days, it's so, so powerful. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Should we, should we get started? We're gonna get started with our neuro activation. So we'll yeah. figure out, you know, what is our income ceiling? It's gonna be a slight, you know, a light meditation. Um, I'll guide you guys into a, a light kind of like trance state, um, but you'll still be fully aware and thinking and everything because I want you guys to remember everything that comes up for you so that you can integrate it into your lives. And what we're gonna be doing is, um, really kind of zeroing in on where our income ceiling is and then, you know, giving ourselves a different vision for that. We're going to be upgrading our minds today around this. Um, and then Solera will do some channeling. So we might run a little bit over. I had a hard stop at 11, but I don't anymore. So I'll try to keep this to like 10 or 15 minutes and then, and then Solera will be channeling. We'll run a little bit over, but that's, that's totally fine. We started a little late. Um, so hopefully you guys can stay for the whole time.
But for now, I want you guys to really um, focus, allow yourselves to relax, to be there. Like I said, it'll be like 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll just guide you guys back in. So during that time, just make sure that you don't have any distractions, you know, turn off your phone. If you're watching on your phone, maybe turn on do not disturb so it doesn't get interrupted in the middle of it. So you can really go as deep as you can um, and, and really, you know, have that vision. So you can just start by relaxing. I want you guys to just take a nice deep breath in and out. Perfect. One more nice deep breath in and out, just relaxing. And as we move forward with this, I want you to just let, let your brain take over, let your subconscious mind take over, let go of whatever you feel like you should be thinking. Even if what you see surprises you a little bit, just go with it. Just go with whatever it is that your mind is telling you. There are no rules for this. Uh, so whatever you see, whatever comes up for you is exactly the right thing. So I want you to just relax and take a nice deep breath in and out, just feel that relaxation from your head to your toes, just starting right at your crown. You can feel that nice tingling sensation at your scalp, moving down your face and feel those facial muscles really relaxing, starting with your eyebrows into your cheeks. Your jaw is just relaxing now, that space where your jaw meets your ears. You can feel it softening up. You can feel your mouth just parting ever so slightly and your tongue just dropping from the roof of your mouth. And you can feel that relaxation moving down the back of your neck, wherever you hold your tension the most. You can just feel that tension washing away. All the way down into your shoulders. Through your arms, into your fingertips. And just feel it running down your back through your torso, down your legs. And all the way down into your toes. And if you're just hopping on now, we're moving now into the neuro activation. So you can just follow along or you can just catch the replay. But now I want you to just open up your eyes and look up all the way up. And take a nice deep breath in and out. Perfect. One more in and out. And then on the third, exhale in and out. I want you to just close your eyes and start to feel them heavy, droopy, and drowsy. And now you can forget all about your eyes. I want you to just look down ever so slightly and see 10 steps descending in front of you. And I'm just gonna calmly, gently, easily guide you down these steps now. Step 10, every muscle, every nerve relaxing. Step nine, just going deeper and deeper. Step eight, every movement, every sound, including the sound of my voice is just carrying you deeper and deeper. Step seven, and you can see your feet, hear your feet, feel your feet, charting each step. Step six, step five, and you're now halfway there. Step four, just continuing to descend. Step three, just calmly, gently, easily drifting to a much deeper level. Step two, step one, and you can just sink deeply, drift deeply, be there. And so now you find yourself in this beautiful place Maybe it's familiar to you and maybe it's not. But you're exactly who you are today. And you see yourself, you see in front of you all of your dreams, all of your aspirations. And there's a ladder straight there. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to just hop onto this ladder and just start climbing. And as you climb, you can see numbers on either side of you. 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 
And by now the ladder might be feeling shorter to you. You might be nearing the top or you might still be right at the very beginning. So I want you to take in what the rest of that ladder looks like to you. Are there a lot more rungs? Are you nearing the end? And then I want you to just keep going. And you can see the numbers as you keep going. And if you've reached the top already, then just hold tight. But if you haven't, just keep climbing. 4,000, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000. And whenever it's time to stop, I want you to just stop. Whenever your ladder has run out of rungs, you can just stop. I want you to just imagine that you've hit a flat rooftop and you can just hang out there. Just climb to the top and just allow yourself to take a seat. But if not, just keep going. 12,000, 13,000, 15,000. 20,000, 25,000, 30, 50. One hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and if your ladder keeps going, then just keep going right now. And I want you to just keep going until your ladder just naturally stops. Until it runs out and don't look down. Just wherever you are is perfect. However high you imagine yourself climbing right now. And once you're there, I want you to hold on to this number. And just take a seat and just relax now. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to count backwards from five and you are going to go right back to exactly why, where, when, and how this became your energetic income ceiling. So as I count backwards now, the years, the months, the weeks, the days, they're just peeling right back as you go there, right back to a scene that's gonna tell us exactly why this number became your max. And it might be small and it might be large and you might already know the answer that comes to you and you might not, but I want you to just go with it. So as I count backwards now, you can just see in your mind the words relax, And as I count backwards, you just go ahead and let your mind let go as the scene just pops up. Five, four, three, two, one. Be there. And as I snap my fingers, you can see this so clearly. You can hear something, you can see something, you can feel something, sense something. And so I want you to pay attention to what's going on. What is it that is being told to you? What is it that's happening? Is someone telling you something? Are you feeling something? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling out of alignment? Are you feeling ashamed? Fearful, confused, lost. What is it that you're feeling right now? And I want you to just allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself to go back as your mind pieces together where, when, and how this became your energetic ceiling. So you can see yourself right there. You're on this nice, flat, safe rooftop. 
as you're just piecing this all together in your mind. And your mind intuitive, intuitively knows why this has come up and why it's important. And so I want to just give you a minute to sit there and think about this nice and safe. Figure out why this number is holding you back, why this number is keeping you small. And most importantly, what beliefs you are forming around this? Is it that it's shameful to make more money? Is it that this was too hard and that it's only going to get harder? Is it that you're not allowed to make more money for some reason? That someone will feel bad if you do? What is it that's coming up? So now I want you to take this number and I want you to imagine it really, really big in your mind. Whatever number it was that you stopped at, I want you to blow it up. Really, 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 really big. Like a big giant balloon. That's just growing, 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 growing. Until now it pops. And as it pops, you see a new number that is three times the previous number, three times as much. So if your old number was 5,000, now it's 15. If it was 10,000, now it's 30. And I want you to hold on to seeing this number in your mind's eye, a big bubble number, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I want you to take into account what you feel right now. If you feel hopeful, excited, how does that number make you feel? And now I'm just gonna enter your scene with you. And I want you to imagine that I'm bringing with me a big giant ladder, bigger than any ladder that you've ever seen. So tall that it doesn't even look safe. And I prop it up against something, an invisible wall. And you can see that where before there was just sky, now it feels like almost a strong base for this ladder to rest against. And now I want you to just take my hand and we're just gonna start gliding up this ladder, not even climbing, just gliding, moving past rungs and rungs and rungs, just going up higher and higher and higher. And so now we've passed two times the previous limit. And now we've passed three times the previous limit. And as we get there, we stop. And I want you to imagine that wherever we've stopped at, you look around and it looks like the funnest place you've ever seen. There's dancing, there's amazing food. It's like the funnest party you've ever arrived at and it feels so easy. Everything feels easy here. Someone takes your jacket, someone grabs your purse for you. Because here you can just relax. And I want you to just walk around 
and see who you find in the space who's there with you. And remember this, who's with you in this space? And how are people responding to you? And as you feel these feelings of enjoyment, of fun, I want you to magnify those. I want you to feel this two times as much, three times as much. Feel that flood of emotions, the happiness, the elation, the excitement. Feel the peace that you feel, the satisfaction. Really step into those feelings and allow them to surround you. You feel so happy, you feel so aligned. It's exactly what you want and you desire. And now I want you to take this number and I want you to imagine that over your head, over this party, there's been a little roof, a little bubble roof. And now all together, everyone is just raising this, just pressing against it, just gently, you can feel it stretching and stretching and stretching. And it never pops, the container just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. More people come in, more fun. And you can see that this is what true abundance feels like. It just feels like more of the good things. So I want you to imagine just pushing out a little bit more, a little bit more expanding just a little bit bigger. Even when you feel like you've reached a limit, you just keep going, you keep pushing a little bit. And I want you to feel that spaciousness around you, to feel that spaciousness in your body. And as you look around, I want you to take in exactly what this place looked like for you. What colors were there? What sensations? Who was there with you? And I want you to hold on to that. And now right in front of you appears an elevator door and it opens right up. And I want you to take a step in there. And you can see that the buttons just continue on. You're only halfway there, but we're gonna go right back down, right back down to the level floor, back to where we are today. And you get there in a second, so quickly. Someone else hops in and you can see that it takes them just as fast to get back up. And the ladders have disappeared. There are no more ladders. It's just this elevator now taking you up and down because that path has already been forged. All of the hard work has already been done. And now you can just step back in whenever you want and just ride that all the way up. To that rooftop of abundance. And so now you can see this picture getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it moves away from you. And I want you to just hop out. Just imagine yourself physically taking a step out of this scene, first one leg, then the other. The scene is just getting smaller and smaller into this little box. And it's just moving a little bit further and further and further away from you. And I want you to feel the motivation that you have to go back there and hold on to that feeling. Whenever you feel yourself getting confused or lost or stuck, whenever you feel like it might be impossible for you, whenever you go back to feeling the previous ceiling that you felt, I want you to just call back this vision, bring the box right back into your space and hop in. It's always going to be there for you and you can just take the elevator all the way up. So on the count of one and two, 
you can slowly, calmly, easily return to your full awareness. On the count of three and four, just feeling lighter, happier, more excited. And on the count of five, you can just open up your eyes, take a nice deep breath, fill up your lungs, and just calmly return to your full awareness. Hi, everyone. So let me know in the comments how that was, what came up for you. Anything that you felt. My party was awesome. <laughs> in my head. That looked like so much fun. And I'm excited to go back there too. And it really is about identifying that ceiling initially and then really upgrading that, multiplying it, right? Where your previous ceiling might have been this, now three times. Emma, I did not want to get back in that lift. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't either. I was like, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just take that elevator straight up, right? Didn't want to leave, yeah. And once you can just expand past the numbers, right? Once you can just see those numbers just falling away at your side and really just focus on how you want to feel on the expansiveness that is actually possible. Megan, I was surprised that my ceiling was a monthly number, not the annual amount. Yeah, that's really interesting. I was on cloud nine being so high in the sky. Oh, Aaron, I got to 5,000 a month and heard that to go any further, I need to finish my degree. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. And did you feel that before? Did you know this before? Oh, I love that. I had a big old fancy California party with stunning water views. Vanessa, my ladder kept going. Yes, so good. But that's good, right? If your mind can imagine it, if your mind can grasp, don't underestimate, your mind can only create what it can see. So when your mind can grasp this vastness, when your mind can say, my income is a ladder that just keeps going, and then we reach the top and then it's fun. And then we can keep going from there. Once your mind can see that and can take that in, your capacity, your potential for growth is so much bigger than when it's thinking about this short, tiny little rung, which is how so many people think about it. Yeah, Erin, I told that in corporate America as a conversation I had with my boss like 15 years ago. Yeah, so interesting. And we never know, you know, where these things come from, but they come back to us, you know? I don't want to get in the elevator either. No, I was just going to say, I didn't feel like there was, there was a ceiling. Like, as soon as I reached to the top, like, the ladder just expanded more. Yeah. Really felt like that. Like I climbed to the top and I expanded. I climbed to the top, expanded. And that's how, yeah, that's how I always feel. But but I've only started doing that like since working with you, like from the channeling, where you always have you know like those exercises. And I'm always like, oh yeah, okay, I can do that, right? I can think about this. Um, but it's really important to start seeing that, to start visualizing that. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it over to Solera. Jody says, my, my number was already at 7.2 million. I was relieved when it went down. <laughs> the good news is, right, if, if 7.2 million is your energetic sitting, then you've got some growth, right? But that might just be as far as your brain can think. And then sometimes, like I, that happens to me when I see like a big like yacht or something, and it's like, oh, that yacht was $50 million. I'm like, oh, that is my, my that's an income ceiling for me. Like, I can't imagine you know, like getting to the point where that is, you know, um, but even if your income ceiling is there and it's something like, you're like, this is so unrealistic, this is fine, expand it further, get past that 7.2 million. Cause the more you can start seeing, you know, it, it plays in, in subtle, in subtle ways, right? If you have 7.2 million, then you might be thinking, well, if there's only 7.2 million, if that's like the max, then that means that there's a percentage for me, right? Uh, any kind of ceiling, I would work at just budging it a little bit, even if it feels crazy high. Okay, I'm gonna switch it to Solera. Sure, no problem. Her. It's funny, because I, I just finished watching the movie um, Wolf of the Wall Street. Yeah. 
which is like based on a real life story about this guy who, you know, he, he did like a lot of criminal activities to earn money. But I mean, it was interesting to see it played out on, on, on TV. It's like, oh, someone can really stretch their limit. Like they can just push and push and push and push. And then there's just no ceiling for them. Yeah. You know, it was very, it was interesting to see that. And it's almost like now, of course, he's like a good guy. You know, <laughs> he actually teaches sales, called straight, like a straight line sales, because um, he was so good at selling like penny stocks and stuff like that. And of course, you can see why well, it's interesting also just the way the movie portrays this guy, like, um, oh, look at how greedy he is. But I, I feel like that's also like a very negative way sometimes that we see like think about money it's like oh I don't want to be like that guy look at how greedy he was that's how he made it to the top yeah I feel like money like the kind of money I think when we talk about money you know Gabby Gabby and I it's like it's about conscious money building you know it's not about you having to hustle to the next level or kind of like that old model of what money looked like on Wall Street eh? we're really talking about conscious money building I think it's very important keep in mind like you're earning money to uplift yourself but you're earning money to lift other people you know as well and um, I but I think it's so important for women to have money like this like mm -hmm. micro economy of women's wealth that we're building I think it's so huge and it I think it's really like a global like it, it's really affecting global change on a level that we haven't seen before right this this economy where women are hiring other women and everybody's growing all together it's so powerful like brings me to tears i love it yeah yeah like another like the what founder bumble just became a billionaire yeah and she's like 31 <laughs> with like a baby yeah. in her hand yeah it's so crazy uh it's it's really really powerful what we're seeing today there really are no limits there really are no limits to what you can create it's such a different world but our brain is still trapped in that old um paradigm you know of like the job the the ladder climbing the ladder the, the ladder ends um so it's really about upgrading that thinking into our current world and when you said that thing about the judging i want to bring something up your brain there there is no judgment except self-judgment every time that you cast judgment on someone else you are judging yourself your brain reads this you make it less safe for you to reach your own goals so when you see someone wealthy who has money the best thing to do is say, I would, I would spend it differently. When I have money, it's going to look like this. You know, if, if it is something that makes you uncomfortable, it's not to say oh, money makes you so greedy. Look at this person, look at this greedy person. Because what happens is that then you're sending that back to yourself. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Alrighty. So I'll ask the guys to come in and I'm sure they have something to say. I never know what they're going to say. So just have an open mind <laughs> and receive it. <laughs> All right. Yes, we're here and thank you for giving us an opportunity to share the space with you both and with everyone who is here. So we will be happy to talk about this idea of a ceiling. Um, when we when we talk about money, like when you talk about money, you're thinking about digits and you know how much you're earning every week, how much you're earning every month, how, how much you're earning every year. But when we think of money, it's almost like we think of it as a lump sum. Like think of, think of, let's say you live up to a hundred, how much money can you really accumulate? Cause that could be a lot and a lot, right? Cause right now you, 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 you associate money so much with time and there's so much stress with, with that. Like I have to earn this amount by this end of, of the year, but sometimes almost like to take yourself out of space, if that makes sense, like take yourself so far from just this year, like, okay, in 50 years, I can probably earn, let's say, $10 million. Like I could have an accumulated amount of 10 million or 20 million or 50. Million. The number doesn't matter. And we're not here to tell you how much you should earn. This is not about what we think you should earn. It's about how much you desire for yourself. But it's almost like you have to play a little bit of imagination game with yourself. Let's say I live until, until 100 and I've accumulated like you know, $15 million by then. And I, I can pay for, you know, all of my grandchildren's college education and I can send them abroad, you know, and they can go take classes and go have fun with their friends. It's like, sometimes you want to stretch your brain so that you're not just staring what's in front of you. The reason why a lot of people come and they, they say to us, oh, I feel really stuck. 
It's because you're just staring at the problem that's in front of you instead of really taking a bigger vision of what you could be achieving by the time you're 100. Like think of when you're 100, you got your children, you know, you got your grandchildren, you might even have grandbabies. What if you can even pay for, for you know, the future college educations of your grandbabies? It's almost like play with that game, right? It's not like you have to pay for their education, just wouldn't it be so fun that you would be so wealthy that you can actually do that? It's like you can literally take care of everybody in your family and then a lot of other people that are not necessarily your family members, right? So it's really about understanding wealth from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to have a lot of money for myself and I can actually have a lot of money for other people. And that include the people that I really, really love and include the people that I that you know i may not know but maybe they have a hard time but now i i'm in this position i'm so abundant that the water just overflows so sometimes when you get into into the situation oh i'm really stuck at this number it's almost like take yourself out of out of what you what you're staring at in front of you and just think of like almost like an exaggerated version of like what could be possible by the time i'm a hundred and it's almost like think of yourself, okay, I'm really close to my deathbed now. Like I'm going to be ending my life. And, and that's everybody's destiny, right? It, we're not trying to be morbid, but that's everybody's destiny. So you're going to be on your deathbed. You're going to have your 10, 20, 30 million, however much money you, you want to have. And you just imagine from that position, wow, I have lived a full life. Like I have lived such a full life. I've accumulated so much wealth. That I can actually redistribute that wealth to so many people that I love and to help those I, that I have never met. And when you think from that perspective, you're actually thinking from the perspective of the, the cup is just overflowing. Does that make sense? We, we want to think from the perspective that I have way more that I, I can't even carry to my grave. And it's a bit of a funny thought, but when you treat it like it's kind of a funny thought, I'm just going to think about it like that. I'm going to be a hundred, almost ready to, you know, drop dead, but I have so much money and I get to really allow all those people that I love to experience abundance as well, because then you make the money just not necessarily about you. Does that make sense? Sometimes you, when you're stuck in your own money story, because you're only dealing with your own issues and your own triggers and your own fear. But if you can really take yourself out of that perspective, okay, I'm on my deathbed. I have so much that I've accumulated that I could actually, I'm not in a position to actually redistribute that wealth. Right? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to take it with you <laughs> to your grave. Nobody can, right? It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. So, Sometimes it's good to take that perspective and think, okay, I'm over all the way here and looking back. And then you try to look back. Okay, now I'm 100. Then I'm going to go back to the age, you know, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay, I'm at this age. Currently, I'm, let's say, 40. I'm 40 now. Okay. Well, if by the time I'm 100, I have so much money that I can redistribute well, then, okay, so what's going to be my next step today? It's almost like you, you have to take yourself out of that stuckness that sometimes you feel, go over there, the exaggerated version of yourself, then come back, you're like, okay, I just, I just had a little freak out moment and it's not a big deal. Because it's almost like that exaggerated vision of yourself can keep you going because that's where you're going. Does that make sense? It, it's like you need to aim really far. Uh, we will almost say to everybody here, your goal is just not big enough your vision for yourself is just not big enough, then we know, we already hear some people argue with us. Oh, but you say that, but what's like my reality? You know, what are my action steps? If you tell me to, you know, have such a big goal that I never reach it, I'm going to be disappointed. But we, we really want to reframe this sort of mindset to think it's not about being afraid of re being rejected by the goal. And it's not about, oh, you have to reach the goal or else you are a worthless human being. That's not what we're trying to tell you. But it's just this fun game of pretending that you're throwing the rock across the, the pond, like skipping rocks. You, you try to throw the rock just as far as you can. You know the rock is not going to reach to the other side of the, of the river or the lake or whatever it is. Generally, it's, it's pretty big, right? You know, you know you're not going to hit it all the way to the end, but that's fine. But still, as, you hit it, you, as you're throwing that little piece of rock, you're skipping water, skipping the pond, 
you, you just throw as hard as you can for the fun of it, right? That's why you, you even play that game. You do it for the fun of it. You see how far you can throw that rock. So we want you to think your goal is like all the way at the end, okay? And it's totally okay that the rock doesn't land on the other side of the river. That, that, that's just okay. Like it's not even a big deal because truly abundance is unlimited. There's no way you will ever, ever reach a certain set of goal. And that's not, we're not saying that to be depressing. It's just that that goal would always expand. Does that make sense? Because because the universe has a desire to expand itself through you. You are actually a vehicle that allows the creator to experience itself and to expand itself. But that expansion, it's not like there, there's never going to be an income limit. There's never going to be like a limit on how much joy you can experience. And there's never going to be a limit on how much love you can experience. So it's almost like just allow yourself to throw that rock as far as you can. And just knowing that it's not going to reach to the other side of the river and that is actually okay. Does that make sense? Because you, you associate failure and success um, with like a certain kind of achievement. And that, that's mostly taught by the school system. So, you know, don't blame yourself for it. Pretty much everybody has it in their system. It's like the school teaches you, you get a hundred, then you're a good student, right? You, you have this grade, then you're a good student, you're honor roll student. You get into this kind of college, you're a good student. So um, almost everybody's been brainwashed in that way that like there's a cap, but we want you to think differently. It's just that allow the, the goal to be unlimited and throw the rock as far as you can and then do it again and then do it again and do it again just because it's fun to throw the rock then there's no pressure like you then you don't know nothing oh i'm like a worthless uh you know human being because i didn't reach my goal or and look at me you know i'm such a failure because everybody has rejected me all the clients have rejected me but it's like every time you you, you go back to these old old living beliefs it's almost like enter into this new vision of yourself of just throwing the rock as far as you can and go back to that vision that exaggerated vision of yourself okay i'm on my deathbed i've got 30 million dollars sitting in my bank account which i cannot take with me to the grave so i'm going to re re redistribute that and that'll be so much fun right because you will get to that point even with 30, 50 or a billion dollars and that you can't take with you to the grave because you, your physical life, at least at the moment, your consciousness is not capable of holding the body until like 500 years old. Actually that consciousness can change over time, but it would take a while for humanity to grow to that level. So we, we don't want you to feel like, oh no, you know, I'm doing something wrong that I haven't accomplished what I said I was gonna accomplish. Like I wanna hit my 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 dollar a month. But we say, actually, even those goals are in a way very limiting for yourself. We, we, we want you to almost like be a little bit crazy, be a little bit imaginative, but don't be like, oh, I really want to have a million dollars. And then you don't achieve it by the end of the month. And then you feel bad about yourself. Remember, the point of it is to throw the rock. It's just to, to, for the joy of throwing that rock to see how far you can do it. And next time you do it again, you throw the rock again because it is so much fun to do. And this is why children play that game because it's just so fun. They want to throw the ball as far as they can throw it because they enjoy the experience of it. And they, they find it so fun. Ooh, now, now the rock goes a little bit further and the, the rock goes a little bit further and goes a little bit further. So we, we just want to articulate this. You're never going to stop throwing the rock until you, of course, complete this lifetime. Then, of course, you're done. Game over, you try it again, you know, in another lifetime. But that the, the movement to throw the rock, which is, you know, all the activities that you're doing to increase your income, you know, to increase the amount of money in your bank account, to increase all the stuff, that, that desire to expand would never really go away. And it's better just to almost like make peace with it. But instead of making peace with it, we want you to make this process a fun process for yourself. Just know that the game, the fun is in, in that expansion. You, you, you actually, every time you reach a goal, actually, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's really nice. I did that. And then it would just become a new normal. It, you won't actually feel that different. 
truly because you're the same person no matter you you're always the same person your consciousness you know you're growing your consciousness but you will always feel like oh i'm just me even at the 10 million dollar you're gonna feel oh i'm just me i'm just me this is my new normal okay great i still gotta go eat i still gotta go poop the same thing you still are living life does that make sense you're not gonna be like oh my god i am such a different person yes if you compare you let's say in 10 years with the person that you are now yes that's a huge difference or compare yourself now to the person that was who you were 10 years ago yes that's a huge difference but at that moment it's just me like you're gonna feel that feeling oh i'm just me so we we always say enjoy the ride because there's no end goal truly there, there is no goal for you to achieve so you might as well throw the rock as far as you can and just go for it don't limit yourself and then don't beat yourself up if it doesn't hit across the other side of the river okay so this is what we really want you to understand from our channeling today through Solera, and just understand what you want is is simply based on your preference you don't have to want what other people want it's like Solera likes, likes clothes and likes bags you don't have to want what she wants and you might want other things, right? And then other people are not gonna like what you want. So don't be afraid of your own preferences and don't be afraid of your, your own desire. It's like, if you wanna collect stamps, go, go collect stamps. If you wanna collect cars, you can go collect cars. There's no judgment. Does that make sense? We're, we are not here to judge you. So you don't need to judge yourself for your own preferences of how you wanna live life. It's like, you want a really fancy cup, you can buy that or you, you just want to have like a $2 pairs of, of, of flip-flops, you can have that. It, it, there's no, no judgment at all. You can want what you want. And once you can actually make peace with the fact that, oh, this is what I want and be okay with it. Once you allow that desire and say, I'm okay with it, then it will start to come. Okay, half the time the things don't come to you, it's actually, you are not giving yourself permission to want it. Okay, so want it, you know, want the Rolex, want the fancy stuff. It's all good because from our perspective, it, it's all spiritual. It, it, it's just spiritual made, made into the physical, that's all. There, there's nothing out there that is not spiritual. Does that make sense? It's kind of like a double negative. Everything is spiritual, okay? So we want to really clarify this. So there is no guilt or shame in any of it. Just go have fun and enjoy the process of creating wealth for the fun of it. And with that, we complete for today. Okay. That was so good. Everyone was commenting on the rock metaphor. I thought it was so good too. Yeah, it's like a kid, you know, throwing that. I loved it when I was little. Like, I just did it. <laughs> yeah, and we have, I would always get inside my head. And I was like, my rock is not going to go very far. I'm so bad at the rock um but but it, it is true you know like when you when we start when we go all in when we commit that's what it is that's what it looks like it looks like just saying i'm gonna throw this as far as it's gonna go just for the heck of it just yeah for, just because it seems like it's gonna be fun and maybe it'll work out and maybe it doesn't who cares yeah it is true it's like there's no pressure it's like when you throw you know it's not gonna land on the other side of that river you know <laughs> or pond whatever and that's totally fine <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love this. That was so, so good. Uh, yes. And that, and that last part, someone said, give yourself permission to want it. And it's so true. I, we really don't, we really don't, um, we feel guilty for all the things that we want. We feel like, you know, the, the deserving thing is such an amazing piece. Um, but I love that. I love that that came through at the end. Yeah. So you can definitely have your $15 million yet. <laughs> How do you know? Now everybody, I'm like, I, I just want one so bad. So bad. Um, yeah. I'm like, I just want a big boat. <laughs> I do. Um, all right, guys. So thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope that this was helpful. Um, and, and I want to say the most important piece of all of this is that when you're thinking about expanding your money consciousness, it has to be fun. Like your brain learns the most by playing, right? Like that's what we did. We came here, we played for an hour, you know, really got our brains thinking differently, really got creative about it. It wasn't just sitting and taking in a lecture about the steps that you need to take. It's about expanding your brain and stretching it a little bit. That's what neuroplasticity is all about. That's what 
you know, embodiment is all about consciousness, right? It's just about expanding our thinking. So thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, Beth yeah. says we're doing this every Friday morning, right? <laughs> every Friday morning, come join us. Um, yeah. yeah, it was so awesome. Thank you so much, Solera. You're welcome. This was a lot of fun. So we'll end the stream. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope it was fun and that you guys learned a lot um, and that you guys have expanded your, your money consciousness a lot. Thank you, everyone. Yay. All right, I'm going to stop.